Terry Young runs a commercial cattle operation near Earl Grey, Saskatchewan, with a base of 250 cows and a focus on selling bred heifers as well as open replacement heifers. Like many cattle producers, Young fights an ongoing battle to keep winter feeding costs as low as possible. About 10 years ago, he heard researchers promoting the idea of winter grazing cows on corn. Thought we'd try, you know, we seeded about 20 or 30 acres the very first year, and there was a pretty steep learning curve the first couple years. Um, but very expensive crop to grow, but when we, when we penciled in all of our expenses and worked back the grazing days, uh, we found that we couldn't, gra or couldn't feed cows through the winter on anything else cheaper. It's a very, very cheap way to feed cows during the winter. This year, Young planted 75 acres of corn. During our December 21st visit, he led his cows into the corn for the first time this winter. But in order to make them eat as much of the corn as possible, he uses temporary fencing and only gives them about six or seven acres at a time. We're just using uh, uh, reels with uh, turbo wire on it, uh, get a good quality good quality wire on, on your reels and uh, we just string them out. We're doing approximately the paddocks when we make our paddocks we're looking for seven to ten days of grazing before we move on to the next paddock. For the first few years Young seeded his grazing corn with an air drill. About five years ago he switched to a corn planter with 30 inch row spacing which has been a worthwhile change. He finds the cattle tend to walk between the rows more, which means less corn gets trampled and wasted. The emergence of the crop, every seed comes out of the ground almost on the same day. Um, and there's a reason that it's seeded on 30 inch rows. The guys down in the States that have grown corn for years and years, um, the crop just does better when it has some, has some spacing in, in between it. Putting in temporary fences to divide the paddocks used to be a huge amount of work for Young, mainly because the large corn plants were in the way. Eventually, he came up with an idea to make this job a whole lot easier, starting at seeding time. This year, I figured out how many times I had to go up and down the field to find my six or seven acres. And then once I got to that piece, I just moved the corn planter over half a width, which left me with about a 10-foot spacing through the corn with nothing growing there, made life really simple this fall. I could come out here on the quad and put my rebar stakes in in the fall while it was nice, string my wire. When the cows get down to the last couple of days in a the paddock, they're usually grazing mostly corn stalks. At this time, Young will feed them a few bales of hay to make sure they're still getting sufficient nutrition for themselves and their onborn calves. He also does some extra feeding on the day he moves them to the new paddock, just to be on the safe side. And that does a couple things. Gives me time to take the fence down, which takes about 20 to 30 minutes. And it also, they, you want to fill their belly up with a bit of hay, just so when they move into that next paddock, because they're going to go after the cobs right away. And it gives, a, gives their room in a, a bit of a buffer so that they don't overload on, on grain and on cobs. Young told us with all of the corn breeding research going on, they're constantly switching varieties and trying new ones. He finds it's usually advantageous to grow more than one variety each year. We grow a couple later maturing varieties, silage varieties is what we uh, really like because of the extra leaf. But we'll always put in some acres of a more early variety because you don't know what the weather's going to do every year. Um, but typically about three different varieties. Um, and. There's always new varieties coming out and we're always, um, you know, testing, you know, trying test plots and trying to see what the, what the next best thing is out there. When they first started with corn grazing, Young found that some of the larger frame cows just couldn't adapt to this system. They were culled from the herd because it wasn't worthwhile for them to pamper a few head. He says the initial costs for winter corn grazing are quite high, but it has turned out to be a worthwhile investment. Right now it's probably around $60, $65 an acre for seed costs. Um, fertilizer, when you're first starting out the first few years, it's, it's a big plant, needs lots of nutrients, so your fertilizer bill's pretty big. But when you work everything back, uh, it's very depends on your weather and, and the kind of crop you get. It has varied for us anywhere from as low as $0.65 cents a day per cow 
up to as high as about a dollar a day. Young fertilized their first corn crop with up to 100 pounds per acre of actual nitrogen, but after 10 years of rotating corn grazing and swath grazing various crops through the same fields, soil tests indicate that only about half as much nitrogen is needed now. 